war in the Kruger National officials are searching for Rhino to be the home. Masheho went missing while on patrol. More than one million the employees of the Kruger National Park say they are tired of going to find Masheho. I request the control for to come and assist us to not request Mr. Masheho. They want answers. I often find myself asking, is the Kruger still worth it? Let's go find out, shall we? Okay, so you're driving around the Kruger National Park, it's really hot, you haven't seen anything for 30 minutes, you're tired of seeing Impala, you want to do something a little bit different to spice things up, play the spotting game. Because then you'll be looking for everything, from mongoose to dikers to giraffe to elephant to leopard to lion, all that good stuff. Whatever you find, as long as you spot it, you get points. When you play this game, your experience will completely change because now what it's doing is structuring your mind and your eyes to look for everything, the small things, the big things. I'm telling you right now, you play this game, you'll never see Kruger the same way. I just witnessed the craziest thing ever. Gents, we're on the S118. We've done the tar road up until this point from Baffendorf. It's elephants in the river. So uh, expectations of this morning. I did the S110 tar, so the S118 dirt because there were lions on both those roads. They're gone, so that's done. Basically just figured out how I choose my first two roads is that I go to where there were sightings to see if they're still there. Maybe something has come behind them. Yeah, the wind is blowing. There's overcast weather. It's quite hectic. Um, so on an overcast day like this, animals move whenever, however, you really can't say because the wind can drive them into shelter because it's cold and they want to seek safety, especially your herbivores. They can see a, a good distance away and your predators might go into thickets to escape from the wind. But also they could use it to hunt and that could be exciting. It's a good day for wild dog and cheetah, really, really good day for wild dog and cheetah. So let's cross fingers, see what we find. Just met two lovely people, Sue and Mike. Hello, Sue and Mike, if you're watching this YouTube video. There's two routes I was going to take. I was either going to go up from the S118 up the S114 to the H2-2, which is the off-foot track I rode and across to Ossol and then back down again. And then when I was on the S118, the game driver in front of me had a number plate of 126. And I was like, okay, maybe the, the S26 is where I should be going. So I started taking the, the S25 and then across towards the S26. And there's Wild Dog right next to the road. What I want to talk about is the iconic landscapes that Kruger National Park has. Now I did a three month trip last year from August to November, 86 days, where I traveled to some of the most insane wildlife destinations in Southern Africa. And Kruger National Park is kind of like unparalleled. There's nothing really 
uh, that can compare to not only the diversity in game but if you strip that away and you just look at the scenery and the landscapes it's wild you know it's so 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 incredible Leftovers make the best food ever. Looks like beef. <laughs> Look at you being all fooled. Take all your leftovers before they go off, put them in a pan, put garlic, put ginger, put salt, put pepper, fry them for a very long time and like love them with your spoon and your eyes. And then at the end of that, maybe half an hour later, you'll be like, ooh, and you'll eat your fork. Trust me. I fed this to somebody two weeks ago and she had the pot in her hand in the kitchen and she was eating like out of the pot. Like, I'm telling you, it's good. Love. Love is the secret ingredient. Hey, pasta, calm down. For gluten-free pasta that looks really good, it better be because it's really expensive, but so am I. Mmm. That is good. Mmm. I want another one. One day I'll have my own restaurant. I'll give you one free meal. <laughs> one, you say? Mmm. Mmm. Tastes like meat. Wow. That is super good. In my car, no one's allowed to sit next to me in the passenger seat because a lady sitting next to me in a game drive vehicle when I was guiding back in 2019 came upon a male elephant and must so I kind of just drove towards this male elephant and she started losing her mind like we weren't even in the danger zone she put me in such a state that I couldn't actually concentrate on driving and staying safe in that elephant sighting so having people behind me um, just allows me to be you know in my own little world I can kind of just like block everything out zone out focus on that animal because that's what they deserve you know and that's kind of what they demand and also um, my weapons stay in the front so my weapons are nice and close to me so that uh, they're easily accessible and uh, I can get 99% of what I see Oh my soul, I am having a mini pleasure moment. Oh my soul, this is like the best kudu content I've ever had. This is an Instagram reel that I'm creating here. Because there's always this Instagram reel of a ram, like an American ram, like a longhorn. And I want to show them what a kudu looks like. They think that's cool? Look at a kudu from this angle. Ooh, he's liking that. Mmm, feels good. Flick him. Flick him. He's in your ear, man. Flick the bugger. Get him out of there. <laughs> He's gonna eat your brains. Oh, wow. He just flicked them off. Thanks, big boy. Oh, gosh. So epic. The kudus for every spiral you see in their horns, that's two and a half years of age. A male kudu can live to about 12. That's a good age for a male kudu. So that male, with having such deep spirals, a very mature male. Because then he has three twists and that white tip. Kudu! Hey you! Beautiful! I love you. Did that just happen? Yes! I got my kudu shot! Yeah! Woo! We saw a kudu. We saw a kudu. Not just any kudu. A really big kudu. I like the way you move. De -de 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 -de. De -de 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 -de. You know what's the problem with real life? The lack of background music. What has been the highlight so far? When I was driving on this 25 this morning, I said to myself, I want to find the biggest herd of Impala. Like a joke. And then... <laughs> These two Impalas are like locked horns fighting. On the ground. And all the male Impala were standing around them and just like fight, 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 fight my son, yeah, that's my son It was 
was so cool. So unique. Like that's what I'm after. I'm after nature revealing itself to me in, in, in special ways. So that I can take that and reveal it to you and show you what nature does. And so May they practice fight and then in July, the June, they fight for real. The biggest and strongest males who've proven themselves in the practice rounds will then fight. And whoever wins, you'll have that herd and you'll get to make with that herd. Then the loser will go join the bachelor herd. So at the end of this day, if I have to reflect back on what was my unexpected experience, I would say it was the wild dog. I encountered some cars on the side of the road and I was like, wow, okay, where's the leopard in the tree? Because they were all parked towards a beautiful tree and there were the wild dogs in the road. It was such a magnificent sighting. For me, wild dogs are such a special animal. It's my second favorite animal because they're such a team animal. They love each other so much. They care for each other so much. And it was really, really special because when you choose your route, you have no idea if you're gonna see something. And if you do see something, wow, that's amazing. But at the end of the day, even if you don't see something like something amazing, like a lion or a leopard or whatever, there's still something amazing to see. Like these impalas in this warrior ceremony, traditional like fight. For me, that is the experience that I'm after. That is what I enjoy the most about being in a natural environment, about the Kruger specifically, is the unique special things that you can see. You kind of just need to pull away the expectations because the more you expect, the more you're gonna let yourself down. The less you expect, the more opportunity you give yourself to experience something, whatever that may be. A lion, a leopard, or impalas fighting. It doesn't matter. I just wanna find things that are special and unique from here on out. So tomorrow morning, we've got a 3.30 wake up. Um, tonight we're going to bed at 7.30. That has been the routine for the last 10 days. That will be the routine for the next five days. And I'm so stoked because tomorrow we're going up to Skakuza and there are so many possibilities. So see you tomorrow and I hope you enjoy this whole thing because it's going to be wild. Ah uh, yes, the African dawn is upon us as the birds twitter and flutter around and the sun begins to rise. We are excited. The first lesson of today is that if you're looking at one side, don't forget about the other side. I was looking at that beautiful scenery with the stalks and the sunrise, and then I look to my right and there's some impalas jumping around. And I'm like, whoa, what's up impalas? How you doing? Just a little piece of advice. This is the Tropic of Capricorn. Super cool place. Literally just down there is where this was. Ladies and gents, this is Lataba, and there's an elephant museum here that they actually redid quite recently. It has all the tuskers in it, so the biggest of the biggest elephants that have ever roamed the Kruger National Park. Look at this life-size busk. We've got huge tusks, big ears that fold at the top, thick trunk. Uh -huh a really big shaped head that means he's 40 upwards 35 upwards he is on must so those are the males you've got to be very careful of because they've got testosterone pumping through their body and they can be very unpredictable because they are just driven to mate but at the age of 14 a male elephant gets kicked out of the herd so the mother will kick them out and then they'll all wander because at the age of 14, they start becoming too playful, becoming disobedient. They'll be lone males, or they'll form groups with bachelor bulls. Also, they'll form groups with the older males, because the 40, 50, 60 year old males will teach the younger one how to be an elephant, how to treat the ladies, how to treat the other animals, how to treat the environment. 
they learn a lot from the older elephants. The males only come back to the herd when the female releases a pheromone that she's ready to mate. The males will follow it. He'll travel 20, 30, 40, 50 kilometers looking for females. Hey, big boy. We see you. We see you. We see you. We see you, my big boy. Come, let us go past. Let us go past. There's a good boy. Uh-uh. We see you, big boy. We see you. Relax. Relax. It's okay. It's okay. We love you. It's okay. Relax. And that is how you calm an elephant. He sees a must. Look at all the urine on the road. That's how you calm an elephant and you teach them respect. They must respect you just like you respect them. First I showed him that I will stand up to him and do what he's doing. He's walking on the road, I'm gonna come to the front, not push past him, but I'm going to show my confidence. So we'll have a standoff in a sense. Then I'm gonna tell him, hey, I see you. So immediately he heard me and he knew what I was saying. And then he went off. Three, four, five steps later, he went off the road. So all the lights are off and I made this fire. Thank you to my mom who came and visited me today. She brought me some supplies because I haven't been at a shop or anything for a long time. But I made this fire from cardboard and pieces of paper and I'm really, really happy. The satisfaction I got from building a fire, come on, this is why you camp, this is why you sleep out because such small things give you such a great satisfaction. I'm gonna sit here by this fire and just enjoy the stillness of the evening. So grateful. Ladies and gents, this morning is the best morning ever. There is a cheetah. I discovered it with another car in the road and then she actually moved off the road and that car left and I waited for about 10 minutes. Eventually she came back to the road, sat in the road and I was the only car with her for about oh, a good five minutes. Five minutes of heaven and then a uh, car started showing up but wow so spectacular i've been searching for cheetah for over eight nights now this is the first real proper cheetah sighting that i've had in my time here at kruger i'm so stoked i've been wanting and wishing and willing to try and get cheetah and my word the content that i've gotten ha oh, i'm so like grateful That's it for me at Olifants. I'm gonna drive very slowly towards the Tara. Very rarely do I leave this late from a camp. Feels a bit weird. And like the later it gets, the more like weird I feel. In terms of the later it gets, the more I feel like I'm missing out. All right, so this is the Tara campsite. I've just parked my car here and I'm gonna go see what I can find, what campsite I want to go to. I say summer's got to be very difficult to find an animal because if it's not on the road then you're going to very much struggle. This is probably one of the hardest times of the year to find animals. Line, yeah. One, there's water all over the shop. That's it. And number two, there's a lot of uh, food around. Absolutely. So, Even like a little puddle on a rock somewhere, a leopard can go drink from that. Doesn't need to move from there because probably little puddles all over there. But if it's winter and there's less water and it's all dried up, a lot of animals are really desperate. You can go to a watering hole and you can find 17 different species of animals at a watering hole in October. You just have to accept each other, they just have to be okay with it because that's the only water. And hippos and crocodiles and stuff start fighting for water. It's nice to see the, the greenery and the babies and so on, but it's also nice to see the winter when animals have to survive. 
So early in the morning and late in the afternoon are your two best times of the day to find wild animals. Because the energy shift, the energy switch is so, it's so captivating. It's all inspiring. So right now there's big male lion. This is the benefit of leaving early in the morning, getting out on the road when it's still quiet. You can find beautiful creatures like this. This male lion is two meters from my car. And it has happened countless times in that first half an hour before the sunrise during the sunrise encapsulation of nature in a moment is that sunrise and in a moment it's that sunset absolutely gorgeous so if you're in a wildlife environment you don't need to be in the kruger national park to experience this just go watch a sunrise and just enjoy the experience if the animals are there they will be there do not expect anything it's something that i struggle with so much i'm always expecting okay where's the next thing where's the lion where's the leopard where's the hyena where's uh something you know and it's just if it's there you're gonna see it if it's not there you're not gonna see it it just is what it is and uh enjoy that sunrise it is so it is so beautiful so yesterday was a day for me. It was difficult because I felt like I put a lot of effort in and I didn't see much animals. It was actually demoralizing and a little bit depressing. It didn't help that I didn't have the energy to work. Between last night and this morning I just surrendered to nature because I'm trying to force my will and my way onto nature and that's not how this works. You've got to just go with the flow. And so here I am going up towards Olifant. I'm sitting with a herd of about 50 to 100 buffalo. Winner, winner! Pause. Oh, chicken dinner! No, buffalo soldier actually. Buffalo are one of your most fearless animals. They are not afraid. Because of the fact that they live in big herds, they have so much confidence because of their comrades. If you find single buffaloes, those are the older bulls who cannot keep up with the herd anymore because they move so far, so they will choose an area with good food and water and they will stay there. Those are actually even more dangerous because they're fighting for their lives. Buffaloes are amazing. I absolutely love them. They have such a character and personality. And um, yesterday was the first time I saw buffalo in three days in Kruger. So it's become one of the hardest animals to find is buffalo. So I think I've seen buffalo twice. Twice. It's actually become one of the top three most difficult animals to see. I'd say cheetah, rhino, and buffalo are your three hardest animals to see. And then wild dog very close to that. So I was literally just talking to a friend of mine, Ricky, who I met up at Satara, and we were talking about the fact that you can take any route. There are infinite amounts of routes or places you can go. But the thing is, you've got to commit to your route and you've got to believe in it. You've got to feel like you're going to see something instead of thinking, oh, okay, where else can the animals be? So when you choose a route, whatever that is, believe that it will work. Believe that you will find what you're going to find. I've gotten the big five three days in a row. This morning I did it before 10 a.m., which is amazing. To do the big five on one morning game drive is amazing. And that is the reason why I came down to Bachendal. And I'm here for one whole week. This is going to be insane like insane to find the big father in four and a half hours and it's my first day i'm really really excited for this week so do not leave this video stay tuned because this is going to be wild like literally and figuratively
almost thought I heard a hyena. I did! A hyena likes my vlog. So my challenge for myself, which is something I've been doing for a long time now, is to keep my cool and to focus on the joy that I bring instead of worrying about all the king of rules and all the sour people. So for me, it's about bringing my joy and spreading that wherever I go. Feeling really, really good. This morning I actually woke up feeling fresh and happy and excited. So uh, yeah, let's go do it. I think it's that time, eh? What is the Latin name for Pangolin? Fera Philodata. Huh. Fera Carnivora. What's in the road? Hyena. Whoa, dude. Hyenas can smell or track a three day old scent. So you can take a pee here and three days later, hyena can come here and can smell you. Check those tails out. They're on a mission. And their tails up like this, it's like, hey, we're onto something. We've got something and it makes them excited. That is quite honestly insane. The cra this is the craziest thing ever. So what happens is hyenas will go out. They'll go out separately. They give themselves a better chance of finding food. If they find food, that's when you hear that, that iconic whoop. Whoop, it's calling all of them back so that they can help each other with whatever's there. Maybe it's a kill that they need to help steal or whatever, there's food to share. But what they're doing now is that they've come back from the evening's hunt. Now they are doing a clan search. And what we just witnessed now is the greeting ceremony. So when they come back, they will greet each other, they will lick their genitals, they'll make sounds, lift the tail, some will stand and show dominance, some will roll over and show submissiveness. So it is just the coolest thing ever. I find this just as cool as a pride of lions coming down the road. For me, it's all about the experience. It's crazy. So, so, so cool to just be in this experience. And sometimes I catch myself, like I'm, I'm, just as guilty of trying to get the shot because sometimes when you get an opportunity to take a photo, it can go past so quickly and you might only get that one opportunity to get it looking at you. So you're kind of like all over the place. But I've found that the right way to do it is rather to enjoy it because then you go slower, you feel more connected to the experience. Then next time, you know, if you do get that shot, it will be because you were calm, you were relaxed. How crazy is that? Like, honestly, to have that animal so close. Yes, they might look scary. Yes, they might look ugly, but they're actually really beautiful animals. And if you get to know them, it becomes a better experience. That's why I think learning more about the animals is so important because the more you learn about the animal, the more you understand that animal and the more you feel the experience. Oh my soul, that is the shot of the century. Okay, move around and look all sexy. Wow, he is. What are you doing? That's so cool. The storks bring babies, so he brings black babies. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, I actually don't know a lot about black storks. No, Indians get woolly neck storks. <laughs> <laughs> If I could be a bushman and disappear from normal life, from civilization and go sit in nature and spend a whole year here, but I would love to be able to drive around at night, early morning, late evening. If you drove between six o'clock and 12 o'clock at night or two o'clock in the morning and six o'clock in the morning, you would see fights. You would see kills, craziest things, craziest things. It's a cool bus, so smart. Turning a crafter into a sleeper van. Wow. Love your car. This is got a liquor double bed in the back. And the color's awesome. And the thing. No, it's the guys who build the taxis and the, the, the ambulances. Okay. They're up in Joburg, they build the... Uh, What's it called? Bus truck. Bus truck. The painting? Who did the paint? These guys. They it was white, it was white, and then they just put the blue. The guy actually built it. Right. He has twins. Okay. And in 2018, he built it for them to go on a holiday after the matric exam. Wow. And you know what happened? A week before the holiday, they phoned him and said, Dad, sorry, we're going with our mates to Cape Town. 
So this thing oh, stood right. in the factory for two years. I bought it with 12,000 kilos on it. What? So I bought it for a song. Wow. <laughs> Oh, it's a Land Rover. <laughs> That's why you don't buy a Land Rover. <laughs> you buy Land Cruisers. I love you, girl. I want to do quite a bit of alterations to this car. This Put big wheels on it. Massive wheels. You can go with that anywhere. So at some stage within the next year, when I get the funds, this car is going to be completely stripped. I'll put a bed in here, I'll put a kitchen in here, I'll put a cupboard in here, and I'll put a rooftop tent. 70 kilometers from where we're sleeping and we have one hour until the gates close. If you know how to do mass, that's 70 kilometers an hour. The speed limit in Kruger is 50. These moments you move with confidence, speed, not rush. It's got a broken wing. Uh, car hit it. Someone was speeding and it probably hit the hit the window and it broke its it's broken its wing the top here. If you do by accident hit something then that's an accident that happens. If something does come across the road stop be competent and know how to keep animals safe because this is their home that's what it comes down to. Don't just let it die in vain that's terrible in my opinion. I say a prayer for everything. Even if I hit a butterfly, I say a prayer for the butterfly, I allow it to go on to the next life. I don't know if I believe in reincarnation, but if it does exist, at least that spirit goes freely back into the universe. Good evening, ladies and gents. It has been such a long day. I'm not even gonna lie to you. It's very difficult to do this vlog right now. I'm gonna be super honest. Uh, things have happened today that have made it very challenging. Went all the way to Mala Mala. I've done, I think, 180 kilometers in 11 hours of driving. I am very tired. Today was exceptional because we had some really interesting sightings with those hyenas on the road. It was really, really cool to see them behave like that. It's something that I asked for last night. I asked for, you know, something different, something special. So that was amazing. I must be honest, I am starting to get tired. I'm starting to get at my wit's end, but it seems like I keep doing it every day. I keep taking, you know, more stuff. It's, it's very difficult. Uh, when I do my morning routine and evening routine, I do them because they are important. Because this environment can really, 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 really take a toll on your body. Sitting in the car the whole day and not really moving much and only using your eyes, your brain uses 20% of your body's calories. Hope to see you tomorrow. It's going to be amazing. Like, it is only getting better and better, so stay tuned because it's going to be super cool tomorrow. I'm super excited. Leopard, 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 leopard. Dude, wow. Wow. What a shot. Oh, he's doing it again. He like bends down. And then like looks at him. And then the other one comes and then they jump on each other with each other. Oh, it's so cute. That's a good way to start the morning. You got a cup of coffee, you got a camera, and you got a wild dog. You might as well go home now. Cool, man. There's not a lot of open roads 
in a lot of national parks where wild dogs can run and play like that. The tar road is really nice and wide, very smooth and open. So that's what allows these wild dogs to run around and play so freely. So that behavior, in a sense, is kind of super unique to Kruger. Like, that's amazing. There's three and a half thousand wild dog left in the wild. It's the second most endangered predator in the whole of Africa. In the 80s, they used to shoot them like they were vermin because wild dogs were seen as wolves that would come in and just like destroy our herd of sheep. But wild dogs don't do that. So if they do kill one or two or three sheep, they'll move on the next day. So instead of the farmers like chasing them off, they would go out, search for them and eradicate them. There used to be 80,000 wild dog in the 80s. There's 400 to 450 wild dog in the whole of Kruger. Kruger is 30,000 kilometers squared, 3 million hectares. If you do the maths of probability, that's 4% chance you have of seeing a wild dog. I haven't even had a sip of coffee yet, so that maths could be completely off. But basically, it's very, very difficult, very, very difficult to find wild dog. And to find them playing like this and interacting and loving each other, it's a once in a lifetime. All that you have is this moment. So appreciate, enjoy, sink your roots into that moment if it's something you love. <laughs> so cool. Finding something like that early in the morning, just you've won the lotto. Done. Yeah, I totally didn't expect that. But the thing is, every time I come back, Kruger always surprises me. And it is wild how something that you've seen so many times and experienced so many times can change. The wild dog love this area and they love using the tar roads to run and hunt, but they're also playing. They also found some trash, which is really sad. They found some packets and some papers and they were eating them and playing with them. And now we're going to do my favorite road in the whole area. This is a real big hill. We're climbing the hill to the top. The reason for coming up this hill was to see if the sunrise would be good. And I was right. This is the place to come for sunrise. And this is also where you learn how to drive. This is what separates men from the boys. Go Moya, go Moya, you can do it. Day four, back and all. And uh, today I decided to skip afternoon game drive. It was quite a long day. Uh, I think sometimes we go a thousand miles an hour because we tell ourselves we have to. It's so nice this afternoon to not go out, to just relax, to be here, to be present in the moment. I've got so few days left in Kruger. At this point now, I am quite exhausted and tired and I just want to get back to some sort of like comfortable life. But at the same time, I know that I'm going to miss this straight away when I leave. So I'm just going to soak up every moment. But thank you guys so much for watching. Absolutely love you. You are my fam family. And I really appreciate you. I hope that you enjoy the content and share comments. Tell me what you think about it. Today was a really crazy day. Seeing those wild dogs running on the, the road this morning was so unexpected. Like there were two hyenas running on the road and then all of a sudden there was a pack of 10, 11, 12 wild dog. It was just insane. It's so rare to find wild dog running so freely, so carelessly. And they're busy playing, they're busy having fun, they're busy being playful and excited. It was really, really special. In all my time in Kruger, 500 plus days and 200 plus nights that comes close to the best wild dog sighting i've ever had we have been treated with such beautiful special sightings first the hyena this morning the wild dog so i'm actually really 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 optimistic and excited and i'm looking so forward to tomorrow morning because maybe something else is special is going to happen something else special is out there for us Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you appreciated it. I hope you enjoyed it. And tune in for tomorrow because tomorrow is going to be amazing. As always, thank you for experiencing Africa.
Good morning. So today is wonderful because I am currently here at this beautiful sunrise. There's an elephant that's... He was on his way to the road. He may cross the road, he may not. Oh, look at that. He's on the road. Wow, that was beautiful. See an elephant crossing the road with this burning fire orange scar behind him. Wow. Right, let's get this going. Have a beautiful day. So these people in front of me here were just behind me when I found um, the female leopard two days ago and they just missed it. They saw it going off the road. So this morning we were talking and I was like, no, you can go ahead. And then I was thinking it would be so cool if they found a leopard now because I found a leopard last time. And they were parked further up so I thought that there was a hyena den. And uh, I was really excited because I was like, yeah, yeah, hyena den. It's all this beige color. And I was like, that's a leopard. There's a beautiful male leopard. So I'm spending my morning with my cameras and the leopard and my cup of coffee. What a great way to spend the day. What a great way to spend life. I'm so in awe of leopards because they are the solitudinal animal. Their mom raises them until about 24 months and then they by themselves. They don't need a pride like a lion to survive. Leopards thrive all on their own. They do everything themselves. They hunt for themselves, they clean themselves, their coats are always immaculate. And then you find them everywhere. Mountains, forests, negative five degrees. It's just insane. I feel like my spirit animal is a leopard. All your predators, anything that protects food, water and its babies has a territory. So it will establish a territory. It could be five kilometers squared, it could be 30 kilometers squared. It depends on how much food are in that territory. The male leopards, their territories are probably between five and 10 kilometers squared. But in winter, the territories become broken down and start changing then the animals will start fighting because there's less water, less food. You know, if there's a watering hole in one male's territory and another male donor doesn't have that watering hole, he's probably gonna go and like fight that male for that watering hole. Over an hour now, he's still here, lying on the side of the road. I think the problem is, our cars are blocking the sun, so the sun hasn't hit him and he's still in the shade and he's enjoying it. He's very comfortable. It's crazy. A giraffe has the same amount of vertebrae as us. They can see probably over a kilometer away and they'll know what it is. That's crazy. That's why other animals stick with them. They love hanging out with giraffe because if a giraffe spots something, they kind of go like or so they'll just stare and then everything else around them will know that there's danger. My new challenge is to spot a leopard on a rock sitting there like the Lion King. Like, like waiting to be spotted. I've spotted a few now on a tree, so I'm happy, but uh, I would love to see one on a rock. Wow, that'd be super cool. Leopards love rocks. They actually use rocks for lairs. Also, it's a good vantage point. It can see kilometers. Then it goes, oh yeah, okay, there's a warthog, there's an impala, zebra, kudu. Okay, I'm gonna go that way. So it's like a vantage point to hunt from. They are a very, very good place to find them. She was recently dehorned. That's how far they take it down. I don't know. I think in 10 years time we're going to see the effects of dehorning. We don't know 
what it does to the rhino to not have their horn. It's kind of like a status thing. It's a confidence thing. Males size each other up just with the horn. They might not even fight each other because one will go, okay, you have a bigger horn or thicker horn, let's not fight. So they use that as a measuring stick in a sense. And now that there's no horn, they don't have confidence, definitely. They've lost their confidence to defend themselves and they have lost that identity, you know? It's their identity. We're not gonna know what's the effects of rhinos losing their horns until 10 years from now. Now a lot of the rhinos stay away from the roads because they've had bad experiences with people, either from dehorning, or the anti-poaching units are chasing them away, or poachers are poaching them. So for those three reasons, rhinos have become a lot more aware of humans' dangerous elements. Oh, a silhouette shot, maybe. Yeah, just like that. Wow, that's a cool shot. Oh, what's that black thing? Oh, it's just a giraffe. Wow, it's not bad, not bad. Really nice general game start. Lots of beautiful giraffe, zebra, a reno. Really nice. Hey guys, it's Justice here from Japan. <laughs> What's your favorite animal, Justice? The wild dogs. Oh, easy man. <laughs> nice stuff. Also my favorite. Okay, yes, man. Cool, man. Cool. Bye. Goals. Pardon? <laughs> my favorite is goals. Wow. <laughs> then you're hard to please. <laughs> That's a land piranha, that can. Pass up. Play veilig. Ja, my Afrikaans niet te slecht nie. Ek kan Afrikaans praat. Praat vir my, kom. Ek sal jou verstaan. Lekker. Ons is lekker in die bos. Ons is lekker op die pad. Lekker in die bos. Kijk daar. Daar by die horizon. Ek weet nie wat horizon is in Afrikaans, maar daar. Wat? Horizon? Wie horizon? That's a whole reason. <laughs> it's a mooi dag om te slaap. Baie van die diere gaan nou slaap. Ek gaan ons, ek gaan ook slaap. Dan gaan ek a bietjie meditate, meditasie, um, dan gaan ek slaap. Yes, we are getting there. Almost there. One more, two more, three more, four, five. Ooh, now there's a big hill. I believe in you. Well, I think he's pretty content there. Eh? Hey, content. Thanks, bruh. Good luck. I'm sure you can get out of that little ditch you've been put yourself in. He put himself in a hole. He didn't dig himself a hole. I feel really good after that meal. In that meal, there was beetroot, which is good for your immune system. There was papaya, which is good for your stomach. There was avo, which is good for your skin. And then those pancakes are just ridiculous. I don't know, it's just like, I love sweet, sour, savory, all the different flavors put into one. Wow, so good. Eight rhino in one day and not a single buffalo. Four different rhino sightings and not a single buffalo. And there's 40,000 buffalo in Kruger. I would say the chances that you've driven past anything today or on any given day is at least 60%. And the thing is it sucks so many factors like patience, timing, maybe asking the right person, hey, what did you see? So that's why I go straight to somebody and I say, hey, what? Hi, hello, nicely. Hi, hello, like they're a human. What are you looking at? Uh, no, there's a, there's a bird. Okay, cool, thanks, bye. Or, hey, there's a leopard. Hey, there's a rhino. Hey, there's an impala. Okay, cool, thanks. 
and then you know. I have just seen it. Two rhino, three rhino, in the same spot. Looks like two females and a baby. In a part of Kruger that I haven't seen a rhino for three or four years. It's so hopeful. We still have a chance to save our destruction of nature. There's hope. Nature can fix itself and adapt. Those ox pickers pick off all the ticks. So they're basically the cleaners of the animals. And if they see danger, they start making the noises. And if a predator or the danger gets too close, they'll fly up into the sky and they'll just go, click, 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 make a lot of noise. So they work together. The ox baker gets a free ride and food and the animal gets cleaned and gets an alarm system. The experience today was absolutely amazing. This morning was really nice because the sun was coming up with a lot of like mist and fog. It was so beautiful. We saw rhino, we saw giraffe, we saw zebra, we saw impala. It was really, really peaceful and enjoyable. I was so hoping to find a leopard. We are finding the leopards, but they're like, wee, very far away. I've really been experiencing Africa over the last month. Uh, tomorrow is the 31st of March and on Saturday I would officially have been in Kruger I think 29 days out of this month so that's just insane I think I was at home for two days out of this whole month really happy tomorrow I am once again on the on the wave riding the wave of whatever comes the, our way whatever is attracted to us whatever special sighting whatever surprise I'm happy at this point now everything is gravy uh, the 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 roast is has been made. It is it's beautiful. Like in, as an analogy, um, everything now is the cherry on top. So I'm super happy with the experience and just looking forward to whatever else comes our way. Just open minded, no expectations, and enjoying the experience. Good morning, ladies and gents. Welcome. It's still very early in the morning, 6.30. A lot of animals will still be moving around, especially because last night there was a massive, massive, massive thunderstorm. Yeah, so now the animals are gonna be all wet, a little bit uneasy, and they're gonna be moving around quite a bit this morning. Predators will be moving around because it's nice and cool, maybe even trying to hunt. But also, because of the noise last night, maybe things try to hunt last night. Use the storm as a distraction. So yeah, let's go out there, let's enjoy it, and uh, stay tuned because it's gonna be a, a crazy day. I'm sure it's gonna be a crazy day. The last day, it's always the crazy day. National Geographic with one tenth of the budgery. Budgery. <laughs> budgery. <laughs> one tenth of the budget. The ladies must love him. They must be like, yeah, you, you've got a really black mane. I like you a lot. <laughs> Once you go black, you never go back. You my dark coffee one. You the dark roast. Yo, these guys are my dollar. How do I keep doing this? First I manifested the kudu, then I manifested the lion this morning. Like literally before that bridge I was like, okay, I'm gonna stop looking for leopard, I'm gonna find lion. And then boom, boom, two lion sightings. Then I was thinking to myself, okay, I'm gonna stop looking for leopard because I keep thinking about leopard and I wanna find two big male lions. Literally, 15 minutes ago, I thought, I wanna find two big male lions. Boom, two big male lions. Hey, big male lion, how do I find a leopard? But I do love seeing you guys, like thank you. This is good as this is as good as a leopard, definitely. Alright, lions, we leave you in peace. There's no one around. 
and he just lay down. Done. Finito. Crazy, it's been, I've been here four nights, it's my last night, I leave tomorrow, Casper the white lion is here, so stoked, so stoked, and I've seen the big five before 12 o'clock, that is like a rarity. Casper, his four, three brothers, the four male lions, and the whole family of lions, lionesses and cubs, have been here. Today has just been crazy. It has been out of this world. This day has been out of this world. Sometimes in nature you just get the days where you get your wish list times, times infinity. When you decide to do something, it's your choice. And you just go for it because there's a reason and it might not make sense and it might not be supported by other people. You might be the only one who feels that way, but just do it because it's your way. You know, there's that song from Elvis Presley, my way. It's my way. Do it your way, you know? Wow. What a trip this has really been. I would say Bachendor actually has the best camp view in the sense that it has the beautiful mountains and it has this beautiful little river that is flowing next to the fence. Shinguetsi, it has a beautiful view, but I think the camps atmosphere at Chinguetzi is quite beautiful with all the trees you've got lots of beautiful animals coming into the camp so it's a really nice mix if you wanted a really nice mix I would say you need to do SSB which is Chinguetzi, Sitara and Bachendorf. My favorite animal camp would be Sitara because it's more locally it's more centralized and the nearest gate is open gate so it takes two to three hours for game drive vehicles to get to Sitara meaning that you can kind of get lost very quickly so when it comes to the big five which is your rhino your buffalo your lion your leopard elephant wild dog your cheetah and your hyena those eight animals have really good populations in the Kruger I love seeing those animals interact with each other and I love seeing them interact with other animals that for me is the most amazing thing is the interaction of wild animals it's like the relationships they have, just like people. It's so cool, it's really, really exciting. So if those are the things you wanted to see, the Magnificent Eight and your zebra and your giraffe and all those wonderful, cool animals, the Kruger National Park is most certainly the place to go. A small thing you can do 
to better your experience in any nature environment. Tap into local knowledge. Ask questions to your guides, to your researchers, to photographers or travelers that you can see are experienced and spend a lot of time. Find the people in that area who have an expertise. I can tell you right now, if you tapped into this knowledge and these experiences, their stories will change your life because the people who live and work in these environments are very unique people. Thank you so much for joining me on this wonderful experience. It really was crazy to spend this much time in the Kruger National Park. And the time here at Bachendal, like I said, has been both good and surprising. Let's not say bad, we never want to use that word. It's been really, really beautiful and I'm, I'm really thankful that you've joined in. Please like and share, it really helps with the algorithm. Like it's really, really important. If there's any way you can support a creator, it is that. It is free, it is easy, please do it. I will love you, like I already do love you, but I'll love you even more, like spiritually, please. Guys, thank you so much. There is, there is only one thing left to say and that is that I would like to challenge you to two things. There is a wild dog challenge and there's a leopard challenge. So far I have not got my leopard on the rock and I would really like somebody to get this for me. So if you get the leopard on the rock, I will, I will actually give you something. I will give you an Experience Africa t-shirt and I will shout you out on my channel. And if you get wild dogs playing or running in slow motion, I will do the same thing. I will give you an Experience Africa t-shirt and I'll shout you out on my channel. So thank you so much once again and I hope to see you next time. Much love.